Rebuild of the favorites. We here for the latest. Yeah. South side or the north side. Not tuned to the greatest. Home team for the home teams. Both sides got our own rings. On the mound or the long ball. But we don't put the wrong strings. Yeah. It's that time of the year now Wrigley or Ganty So the whole league that we hear now New show with a new mood Discussions and interviews Straight rumors that might be This is Pinwheels and Knife yeah. What's going on everybody? Uh, welcome to those that were waiting That was kind of cool, that's new uh, On the YouTube channel um, We're just going to go ahead and get some Tweets and retweets And all that other fun stuff done and then we will get this party started. All done. Oh, got the all clear from the man eating his microphone. <sighs> wait, 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 before we start that, so how's this? Oh, very deep. Too close. Too close? How about this? Yeah. Better. Okay. Yeah. So for those of you uh, that have been complaining about the heart monitor in the background. We have found the problem. It has been fixed. If you and hear it again, then do call. Uh, nine yeah. Nine. Yes. If, if you do hear the heart monitor in the background, please. I guess it, it, it's only if, if, if it flat lines, right? That's when. Yeah. That's when you're in real big trouble. But um, all right. Let's. Uh, oh, man. Let's get into this. Three, two, one, fuck the White Sox. Uh, what's going on, everybody? It is Thursday, April 21st, and you have found the Pinwheels and Ivy podcast. I am your host, Matt Swaski, a.k.a. Southside Zoe, a.k.a. Father Zoe. And with me, as always, Mr. Aldo Soto. Guys, we're only two weeks into the season, and I'm already getting annoyed with the Kosuke Fukudome comparison to Seiya Suzuki. Please stop. I know stop. I shouldn't care, but please stop. 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 Just, just stop. The, the, it's so lazy and like sneaky racist. Like, just stop doing that. Especially stop. if your only argument is when you show me batting average. Yeah. Now I was like, right, stop. Yeah. Stop. Just stop. And before those gummies kick in that he just took before we went, I live, think they have kicked it. This is the Reverend K. Fitz. Happy holidays, everybody. Uh, yeah, I'm challenged channeling my inner towel for tonight's episode so uh if you hear the sounds of pretzels and or doritos crunching my, my apologies ahead of time and if you if you hear peanut butter well <laughs> who's more toast kevin or dallas keichel Ooh. keichel um so it, we're gonna true. get into that we're gonna get into yeah. the absolute <laughs> shit show that happened in cleveland on wednesday uh there's a lot of things to talk about actually but Let's just dive right in. So let's tap this keg. Uh, the show is brought to you this week by Chicago Golf Tour. That is shygolftour.com. Amateur golf for the common man, built on schedule flexibility. Uh, still time to sign up. It's supposed to be 60, 70 something degrees on Thursday in Chicago. The warmer weather is trying really hard to break through. Uh, we've all been itching to get back out on the course and no better way to play in a little bit of a competitive league. Uh, shygolftour.com. Uh, they have events all summer long. Uh, you get two weeks to complete uh, an event at the course. Uh, you have to play with another member of the tour to attest your score. It's a great way to meet new golf, different golfers in the area, as well as just force yourself to play some of the awesome courses that we have in the Chicagoland area. Uh, Shy Golf Tour, make sure you use promo code SM25 to get $25 off your sign up fee. That is Shy Golf Tour. Amateur golf for the common man, built on schedule flexibility. Shygolftour.com, promo code SM25. That was pretty solid. That was really good. I was really that, that, that was pretty solid. No, I'm just, I'm just in a shitty mood, so like I'm more serious right now than I usually am. <laughs> like hate read? It was a hate read? Yeah, I wish I was reading. It's all off the top of the head every week, folks. That's that's. Well, you know who might want to, uh, who might be getting some practice on the golf course soon. Dallas Keitel. Yes, but before we get to that, even hold on. I know you're itching for me to just fucking. Be I'm ready. I've been waiting for this like for like eight months, I think. But ever since you first teased it, there's something else. There's two other things we got to talk about. Two other things. One, as of right now, next week is going to be a very special show for everybody, and it's not just because Fids ain't coming. It's because we should be having the. Uh, GM of the Birmingham Barons, Mr. Jonathan Nelson, joining us on the show. 
uh, to, you know, kind of give us a, a sneak peek, not a sneak peek, kind of like an insider look at what's going on down in the farm in uh, Birmingham. Uh, you know, Cespedes is down there. They got a lot of talent coming up. Um, they got a lot of work to do, but there's some kids that down there in the White Sox farm system that, if handled correctly, can, you know, be some great ball players. So uh, we had him on many years ago, and he was a great interview. I might get him to try to tell that Michael Jordan story again uh, from when he was with the Barons. Um, but you're going to want to tune into that. It's a little bit going to be a little bit different pace than what we're used to here, a little bit more formal. But, uh, yeah, we're really looking forward to having Jonathan on again. So that's next week. And then there's something else I want to talk about. So we joke about it all the time. And it's one of those things where you keep joking about it. And then like, there's a moment where it hits you and you're just like, is this like for real? COVID. Oh, oh, sorry. Shit. No, I, 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 I've, already, I've already, I've already had that shit. I know that shit's real. Um, we like to refer to it as the pinwheels bump. Now, for those of you new to the show, what the pinwheels bump is, is when we talk about how shitty a guy's been playing or we get really mad about a player. And then in the seven days in between shows, they decide to play fantastic baseball. Now, something to keep in mind, though, is the pinwheels bump works both ways. For example, last week, I basically gave Luis Robert a hand job on this podcast and he hasn't gotten a hit since i think that the title the, there's only been one man uh who so far has it even though he did strike out a couple times on uh uh wednesday's game against the rays but that title the title of last week's podcast was louise robert is a star yeah and then he's gone <laughs> oh for the week we're talking just, about how he's gonna be winning mvp after mvp <laughs> Just, just over for the week. Oh, he, he's he's elite, elite of a defense. He's he's such a great hitter now. Like yep. all of you are fools for ever doubting that he can hit second. No hits. Since. No hits. <laughs> no hits. But on the flip side, there was a Cubs version of it last week where Aldo, go ahead. What did you do? Oh, it's it's. I think it could have been even worse because Kevin wasn't on last week. But I think if Kevin was on, like Patrick Wisdom, like I, I think he would have gotten a hit every single at bat. He might have. It's possible. <laughs> like there's some toxicity there. <laughs> like, like we were just going, we were just going over. Like, yeah, he's been struggling. He struggled since the last two months of uh, 2021, off to a terrible start. The first six games uh, in 2022, you know, r- wrote up a whole little thing. And hey, he's been struggling for a lot longer than just six games. And then what does he do? He goes like eight for 13 with five doubles, a couple home runs, five runs scored, and uh, makes make oh, makes me and uh, Kevin uh, look like fools. Uh, so, but, but I'll take it. <laughs> no, absolutely. So that is the pinwheels bump. Works both ways. So with this great power comes great responsibility. So we're going to start making this a weekly thing on this show. Now – we're going to start tweeting out, I don't know when, we're going to stay consistent with the day, but four options for our listeners to choose from for us to hopefully apply the pinwheels bump to. Okay. okay. So it's going to be like a, a listener nominated thing. All right, all right. And then we're going to try to like work. So this. are they offering up their prayers to us, basically begging us to choose their favorite player to give the pinwheels bump to? Or are we going to get like a sacrifice? Hopefully uh, they don't use it for their favorite player. Hopefully they just use it for a guy that like needs it. It's like when you donate like shit, like you hope it goes to a kid that needs it. Like we're trying to get it to a kid that needs it, but nobody's going like, to cut that, like cut the scalp or cut like the top off of, a, of like the, the uh, a bush light. Just, not yet. We we might get there. Out a, like an altar of like made of Legos. So with all that being said, I'm nervous about this next thing we're going to talk about. Because if this pinwheels bump works in reverse, that means this fucking chuckle bag is going to stay on the team. Like a chuckle bag. I'm fucking done with Dallas Keuchel, man. Hashtag done. Dallas Keuchel. Hashtag <laughs> done. It's, 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 it. it's over. There so it the, is. It's it's hashtag done. <laughs> done with Dallas Keiko. Now, for those who are new to the program, when I declare myself hashtag done with someone for a season, 
That doesn't mean I don't want them to succeed. So if Dallas goes out and throws in a crazy great start next time, you can go ahead and save your energy. You don't need to tweet me. Oh, you were done with him. I'm glad. I'm happy. That means the White Sox won. What it means when I'm hashtag done with a player means that this guy has made me so frustrated with him where I've bitched about him ad nauseum that I'm just done with him. I'm just not going to talk about him anymore. After this episode, I'm not going to talk about Dallas Keuchel anymore. I'm not going to tweet about him. I'm not going to talk about him. Basically, it just doesn't exist. So I am hashtag done with Dallas Keuchel. So how do you, so this is a lot tougher because like when you do it with hitters, like I mean they only come up to the plate like what like you know four maybe five times a game, mm-hmm. <clears throat> but you know as things stand right now with the Beefs boy uh, Vince Velasquez is also not doing so hot. Um, mm-hmm. I mean Dallas Keuchel is going to be in the rotation still for a while. So like how are you going to treat his uh, the days he starts? I'm going to figure it out. I'm, <laughs> I'm going to figure it. I'm, I'm going to figure it out. But I'm just I'm done with him. I'm done with him and. Before this show, I was coming out to the show that I knew I was going to announce I was done with them, just done. And then I saw his tweets or his quotes <laughs> after he went out and got absolutely fucking shelled versus well, Cleveland in game one of the double header. Well, that's what I was going to say. Before we get to the the hilarious quotes from Dale's Keiko, by the way, like a third time offender, at least, I think, when he yes. uh, doesn't want to take accountability. But was it – were you done after, like, the fourth hit in the row, the fifth hit, the sixth hit, the seventh? It was the grand slam. <laughs> it was the it, it was the 86-mile-an-hour cutter down the middle to the best hitter in baseball with the bases loaded. By the way, thank you. I had uh, Jose Ramirez plus two total bases. That's the smartest. Anytime the, the Guardians play the White Sox, if you don't bet that bet, you're not very – It was savvy. unbelievable because, like, I mean uh, – How that's plus money – blows my mind right that was unbelievable um but th- that was the thing like in that situation it was terrible because you can't i mean i guess i guess tona la russa could have pulled a joe madden right he could have intentionally walked jose ramirez i mean it didn't matter because dallas keiko was giving up like a million hits that inning but yeah <laughs> nowhere so for those of you that don't know keiko what was his hold on let me get his official stat line because i know everyone's gonna be up my ass about this if i don't get this correct Oh, so fucking aggravating. <laughs> so fucking aggravating. Uh, took the ball for game one versus the Cleveland Indians. One full inning pitch, eight earned runs, 10 hits, one home run. Okay. Now, before the comment section lights up, Tim Anderson had three errors. There was four total. He did not get a lot of help from his defense. Now, a good ball player, a decent fucking human being, after putting up that fucking dog shit of a line, would probably talk to the press and say, I got to be better. I got to do better. This is on me. I know my defense had a little struggle today, but I still gave up 10 hits in a fucking inning. I got to be better. Like, I've been struggling going back to last year. I'm supposed to be one of the leaders on this team. They brought me on this team to be you know, veteran presence during the playoffs and stuff like that. You know, I should really lead by example and get the troops going. That's what a a fucking person with half a goddamn brain in Major League Baseball would fucking say something along those lines. Here's what Dallas had to say. From Daryl Van Schwen from (laughs) Chicago Sun-Times, Keiko felt like he made only two bad pitches, one of them the cutter to Ramirez that was ripped for the slam. Quote, I'll take nine singles and a blast. Three hard hit balls all day. First pitch swings. Ground balls. I mean, really all I wanted. Asked about the atrocious defense support, Keuchel said, just when you think you've seen it all, you really haven't. And And he just left it at that. What a piece of shit. Has anyone's like like a stock like just plummeted faster than De- Remember 2020, Dallas Keuchel? Everybody loved him. Like everyone's like, yes, we have the guy. He was talking about, you know, we're we're gonna be making the playoffs. What was it? His mom or his wife? What was the whole thing about? Like, it's a guarantee we're making the playoffs, or this is a playoff team, whatever. Everybody was hyped. Yep. Ever Dude, since, <laughs> ever since then, because this goes back to last year when he was starting to struggle. 
And then there was the, uh, well, I mean, hold you know, there's some, there some plays that weren't made behind me. <laughs> I'd like to um, present something new into evidence as well for this hashtag done. Is it is it the meth that he must have been smoking before he went and did that interview? No, 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 no. Um, hold on, I got to hard hit balls. Uh, Aldo, by the way, while he's he's looking up hard hit balls, um, yep. And the search engine's great. It probably it, the auto correct with ball, auto fill with balls probably came up pretty quick. So, um, who did that sound like last year in the Cubs locker room in the first month or so of the season? Who did Dallas Keuchel sound eerily similar to? Oh, I know, uh, I know who you're talking about. Uh, the uh, recently retired Jay Carrier. Yes. And Always like, oh, I made up great pitches today. Like, bro, you gave up fucking ten hits in like eight runs. And here's and here's the thing. You didn't throw well today. I don't give a shit if it's soft contact. They got you got boat raced, but they just yep. and, air it. And here's the thing. Like we are talking about, you know, veteran guys, like in both cases, veteran guys who who have had, you know, accomplished careers. You know, Dale Skykel, I think he was a Cy Young winner before, right? World champion, mm-hmm. you know, yada yada yada. Yep. He's he's been an accomplished pitcher. But at, like you said, so he didn't even have to say all that that you said he could have said. All he could have said is was my day. Wasn't he could have said wasn't my day, yep. wasn't our day. That's all <laughs> that's all he needed to say. Wasn't he could have even he could have even been like day, wasn't our day. Could have even just said, like, you know, we got 162 of them. They're not all gonna be great. Today exactly. wasn't our day. Let's just go out and get the next one, boys. Because here's the thing. I mean, these guys are all competitive, yeah. Like, even if he does I mean, obviously he believes it because he said it. And and hey, let's just say even if that was the case. Just be a good teammate, dude. Like, like a, I mean, seriously. I get the feeling that he's trying to convince himself. Like, like he's trying to talk himself into believing it. He's like, oh, no, yeah, yeah that's fine. Man. And I lovely. really, yeah, really. I mean, and I'm not trying to, like, create anything. This is just me speculating. Like, I wonder what, like, guys like Dylan Cease and Lucas Giolito think after they see that. Like, these guys are, like, ultimate team guys. Like, they've Probably. been, like, known awesome dudes in, in the locker room. But um, as I'd like to present to the court here uh exhibit uh b on um, why dallas sucks today that's the second inning remember he only had three bad pitches or two bad pitches we have 92 98 87 111 110 104 98 88 99 those are exit velocities folks i'm not reading off lotto numbers um, of the Cleveland Indians in the second inning. So for a guy that only threw, what do you say, two bad pitches? Only two, three, me three, two, two, three. Uh, three hard, three, three, hard, three hard hit balls, balls all day. All day. Yeah. Well, oh. uh, as, as the... I count three in a row. As the, Go back to it. Go back to it. That's three in a row. As the legend Maury Povich says, Jose Ramirez Grand lie. Slam. <laughs> Framer, uh, Framer Reyes, the single, and then another single by Rosario after. That's three in a row. 111, what? 110, 104. Look, it wasn't it wasn't over a hundred exit velocity, so those aren't hard hit. Uh-huh. <laughs> it's ninety nine point eight. Ugh. God, it's not hard hit. It's a hundred. Yeah. Sorry. I mean, the other. So, um, I jumped on a Twitter space with friend of the program, uh, Josh Nelson, after game one, and we were talking about this. Um. Josh made a really, really good comparison. Uh, Jake Arrieta one, I think is phenomenal, by the way. I think you guys nailed that one. But um, as far as White Sox lore goes, remember John Danks last year? John, John Dank last year? John, no, not like John. I'm talking about John Danks is last year with the White Sox. Oh, oh I do not. But I remember having to use that. So he, he wasn't a... Oh, yes. <laughs> I mean, he he wasn't a complete douche canoe in the press like this, but um, they gave him a bunch of money. You know, expectations were high, and it just it just all fell off, and it fell off fast to the point where the White Sox were just like, you know what, we're just gonna this isn't good for either of us. We're just gonna DFA. It's just it's time to go. Now, I think that's a great comparison. Um, and then also, you know, there's a lot of people tweeting and talking about all this stuff. Like, uh, yeah, instead of Mark Burley, yeah, it was a real motherfucker. Um, you know, oh, there's no way Jerry Reinsdorf just eats the money. Well, he did DFA Adam Eaton as well last year. 
to watch him go get cut by the Angels. Like, I think the White Sox have shown if it's really that bad, they'll just eat it. And mm-hmm. I don't see Keuchel taking a bullpen roll. I, definitely, I just don't see it. I don't think that will go over. I don't think well. I want him to. Look what he did in one inning today. Um, and so I, th- I do think, though, obviously, you know, Giulio is coming back from his minor injury. Uh, you have, you know, hopefully Johnny Cueto's ramping up. He should be around soon, maybe a mm-hmm. week or two. Giolito's going to start Sunday against the Twins. Uh, I guess uh, Cueto is like not far, like a week away. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, I mean, you, you just have to see how Vince Velasquez is doing. I just need Vince to give us like three, four innings, man. <laughs> Like he really just needs. That to is true. Over. I mean, the bullpen. The bullpen has the been. Bullpen, that's a, that it right now, without a doubt, the biggest bright spot for the White Sox is the bullpen. Jose Ruiz, Ruiz, Ruiz why can't well, why can't I say that? Ruiz, yeah. uh, Tanner Banks, uh, Bummer had a good day in Cleveland on Wednesday. Uh, Liam Hendricks has been shaky, but he's been getting the job done. But outside of that first uh, appearance in Detroit. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, top to bottom, and apparently Joe Kelly is uh, – He's going to be coming back, yeah. You know, he's looking all right in his sessions and stuff like that. So, By the way, for for the listeners who've been paying attention since the beginning of the show, um, get ready to bet on the Twins this weekend every time the bullpen for the Sox comes in because we mm-hmm. just praised the Sox bullpen. So <laughs> <laughs> I'll have this clip ready for uh, you yeah. know, the first uh, blown save. I don't want to get I don't want to give them too much, but they've been really good. They've been really, oh, they've really been good. They've been phenomenal. And the one that stands out to me the most, I mean, he's been quietly really good. He's had an under three ERA since 2020. Is Jose Ruiz? Mm-hmm. That that fastball changeup combo he's working has been really nice. Um, yeah, no, but but as far as like DFA and Keuchel and that, that does it, it does come down to like what's the depth behind him? Yeah. Um, so I mean, the other guys, what Jimmy Lambert, I guess. It, yeah, Lambert. Uh, I mean, I haven't really even looked at the pitchers in Charlotte and Birmingham. That'd be a great question for Steven next week, um, Alex. So some rebuilding team might be willing to take him up to eat up innings to avoid hurting their young arms if the Sox are looking to give him away. I totally agree. I totally agree. You know, why not? I, for a struggling team, fuck, send him to Oakland, for fuck's sake. Who cares? Oakland had 2,000 people in attendance today. No, but that's the thing. Like, are, are the Sox going to pay? Like, 70, yeah. 80% of his salary? <laughs> That's true. I don't know. We'll find – I haven't really thought about it. We'll think about something. But someone might – I think someone will take him. Um, See, that's the thing. I don't because they're just going to be like, we know you're going to just – if you're looking to dump him for nothing, we know that you're just going to release him eventually. Oh, well, then just DFA. I At this point, I don't really give a <laughs> shit. Just DFA him then. Just eat the money. Go Man, away. we had those like three innings last week. Yeah. <laughs> Remember when- he was back. Don't, don't forget those three innings, folks. <laughs> Just hold on to those. Early. And the thing is, like, the 10 run inning, I mean, it sucks, but it happens. It's Wait, this, hold on. I'll repeat that one more time again. The 10 run inning? Uh, wow. Wow. It's really like. It could just end the sentence right there. And the the ten That's run the inning. Thing. Those do happen. They do. They happen. Giolito got lit up in the in Boston at the beginning. And all of he had to year. do was like, it wasn't my day. We yep. we didn't come out ready. Bam, nail it. Throw it in the garbage. Actually, we'll get him game two. Somebody that can do it faster than I read it. Yeah, someone that could do it faster than I can because otherwise we'll sit here in silence for the remainder of the show. Can someone find Lucas Giolito's quotes after he got just absolutely rocked? in Boston at the beginning of last year. I guarantee you it was all about him. I mean, granted, he didn't have a bunch of errors behind him like Dallas did, but for mm-hmm. Dallas to say he threw three bad pitches in a 10-run fucking inning, get fucked, dude. Get the fuck out. Go practice falling down. Get the fuck out of here. Um, oh, I'm so done with him. I'm so glad I'm done with him. All right, Dallas Keuchel. Five Dallas and Keuchel. Coming up with his next five starts, 2.13 ERA. Dallas Keuchel throwing a no-no next outing. <laughs> Um, but the White Sox struggles don't begin and end at Dallas Keiko. The, the batting has been atrocious from the names that the White Sox need to hit for, uh, for it to get done. So as the time of this show, uh, I'm just going to read some, some slash lines for you. Some, some good old slash lines. Um, 
these aren't pretty. If you have children listening to this, you might want to uh, earmuffs. 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 Um, earmuffs kids. Luis Robert, 175, 195, 350 with an OPS oh. of 545. Oh. Jose Abreu, 216, 293, 351. Yasmani Grandel, 121, 171, 212. Y- Yasmani, if you're going to hit 121, you got to start fucking walking, homie. Um, Tim's doing his thing. Where's the other one? Josh Harrison, 107, 138, 214. Aloy Jimenez, 222, 267, 333. Everybody's favorite for some fucking reason still, Larry Garcia, <laughs> 0. 0.077, 0. 0. 0.111, 0. 0.115. Absolute cheeks. Fucking dog water. All of them. It's just, it's just got to be better. And I know it's cold, Kevin. I know it's cold. I know it's cold. I know the weather is affecting these hitters. I understand that. I get it. I'm I'm not. I'm in no way waving waving the white flag or anything. I'm just saying that they came out hot, and it's just almost incredible with how fast all these bats cooled down. Again, Tim Anderson's doing his thing. He's flicking off people in the crowd. He's hitting 375, 394, 594. Andrew Vaughn, your boy, Kev, 310, 375, 552. Um, you know, he's been solid. Uh, still get really nervous with him in the fucking outfield, but at the plate, he's solid. Um, it's just the hitting's got to be better. I don't. I really don't even know what to say. Uh, one of the things that Beef Loaf, Uncle Beef, pointed out on Twitter uh, is the White Sox bat pip. Basically, when they put the ball in play, the luck they get with the ball for those that aren't down with the advanced stats or whatever. Uh, right now they currently rank, what did I say? 26 or 24th out of 30, 24th out of 30 in the league. So the white Sox are hitting the ball. They're just not, they're putting it where people are. And that's uh, obviously an issue in baseball when your goal is the opposite. So that's kind of, you know, I don't want to dwell too much on it. It's, I think it, it'll change, but, um, you know, they got one more Thursday at Cleveland. Uh, then they got a weekend series at Minnesota. And then they come home. They got a nice three games versus KC. And then four games versus the uh, Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim or whatever the fuck they're called now. Um, I got to figure out what game Shohei's pitching. That might be my first game of the year. Wait. Ooh. Does Larry Garcia really have a negative 76 WRC plus? He has a negative 76 WRC plus, and people still <laughs> fucking defend him on Twitter, Kevin. <laughs> oh, I know who defended him on Twitter. He has a negative 76 WRC plus. WRC plus starts at 100. <laughs> That's an average it player. fucking starts at 100, and he's negative 76. Figure it the fuck out or stop playing him. He's like that guy on Jeopardy that gets every single answer wrong and actually ends up having to owe. Jeopardy money at the end of the day. Oh, here's something interesting. Is it how a player can get a negative 76 WRC plus? Because if it is, I'm all ears. Well, no, that yeah, that's just called being a bad hitter. Um, no, figure so that you see out. actually how it happens. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, but... <laughs> Healy, don't get me started, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, you have to keep getting him playing time. You have to get out of his slump. So. Yeah. Um, so, you, so you mentioned the bad pip numbers. Obviously, you know, not hitting into a lot of luck so far. Um, but I think I think I saw Jordan bring it up earlier in the week. Sox just love swinging at everything so far. They have the yeah. highest swing well, rate in baseball, above fifty percent. That's the reverse pinwheels bump too. Although, because we were just talking last week, how it looked like these guys are actually seeing pitches. And I just looked up. Um, I don't know how far this is updated, but at least uh, this is, I guess before the doubleheader. The White Sox have a six point a six percent walk rate ranks. 30th in Major League Baseball. Dude, Dead yeah. I actually saw some some people on Twitter commenting about how walks are not valuable. When the, when the Sox were actually a week ago, when they were actually being a little bit patient, they, they were saying that walks are stupid, that their walks are invaluable, and that you should swing outside. I don't know how you can say that after last year I mean, when one of their best players was this Monty Grandall walking all the so, time. That is so good. You just move the line, and the next guy gets an opportunity in a stressful pitch situation. Like That's 6%. the beauty of that. We're talking about Javier Baez swinging yeah. everything, uh, walk numbers. For hold, the on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I mean, so that's hideous. Here's all you need to know. This kid that they brought up to be the whatever man on the roster 
uh Hasley. Hasley. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, he took uh I think he has he took two walks today. I think he has as many walks as Yasmani Grandal does on the season. Not great. <laughs> No, not no, great. no. That's all you need to know. Six percent dead last in baseball. They're they have a swing rate above fifty percent. Number one in baseball. They're just up there swinging at everything. Alex, I'm gonna holler at you about this, but I need to see Otani in person. Um, but yeah, it's just I don't know, dude. Like, Larry, this might be a record-setting season where I have two guys I'm done with. It's never and been done. It's never it, been done before. Didn't Larry sign like a three-year deal? <laughs> There's, it's, they got so cheap. And now fucking Harrison's hurt again because Andrew Vaughn decided to try to kung fu kick him in a play in the outfield, and he had to do like a Jesse White tumblers flip over him, and now his shoulders hurt. Well, that means more Danny Mendick, who got a double power hitter. This fucking team. All right, <laughs> let's talk. About, you I know gotta, what's also crazy though? We're talking about all these guys. Last week we were all ta- we were also talking about like, hey. The, the White Sox have some actual like uh, good depth on the team. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's but see, that's the thing. That's why where my frustration comes out from because this team could be so so good, so so good. But you got to have more guys bet. Let's just well, I think it's pretty, I think Let's it's just have obvious. more guys betting over two hundred. Well, yeah, I think it's pretty obvious that this is AJ Pollock's team. You see what the offense was with him and without. AJ Pollock gets back on uh, hopefully tomorrow. Friday, right? Friday, yeah. yeah. Um. Yeah, uh, just for the record, White Sox Twitter, I love you guys so much. People are just demolishing Dallas Keuchel for those quotes on Twitter right now. Yeah, it's, oh, they should. Uh, That's the thing. It's on. It's we we saw the who was the player for the Phillies like the first game or second game of the year when he when they he got he got caught on camera being like I fucking hate it here, and then he like he, he owned up to it in the media and the next day. Like Philly fans are like like all right, like give him a uh, Alex Bohm. Yeah, Bohm, give him like a standing, a standing ovation. That kid did it right, man. Yeah, it's like, hey, (laughs) just own up. Like, I mean, it's the cliche thing. Like, we're such a forgiving society. If you just kind of so show some humility, just some sort of like, hey, yeah, it's on me. Like, it's it's so easy to navigate through the media. I'm actually kind of a shady Alec Bohm fan. Like, I, I, he's one of those guys that, as Healy pointed out in the comments, his 2020 was atrocious. But like, I, for some reason, I believe that kid's gonna be good. And I think it's just because he could absolute he hits absolute fucking tanks when he gets a hold of the ball. But I mean, you can read his lip clear as day in Philly, which is probably one of the toughest crowds in the world. He goes, Man, I hate it here. And then after the game in the locker room, this kid, not a former Cy Young winner, not a World Series champion, not someone that's supposed to be veteran presence in your locker room. This kid owned up to it. Yeah, I'm sorry, Healy. You're right. I'm all over the place. Yeah, it was a bad game too. He had like three errors. He was booting the ball all over the fucking place. He's getting mm-hmm. booed left and right, which he should have. And but he owned up to it. And then the next day, he was met with a standing ovation in Philadelphia. So he was like, I in mean, obviously, Philadelphia. Like obviously, it's not as easy as you know us seeing it from a distance. But like right. you know, guys can like all over the league. Like, <laughs> and that's the thing. And that's the thing because it's not the first time Dallas Keuchel has done it. No. So, like, how do you guys in that clubhouse feel about? Because this is—I don't even think this is the second time. I don't think it's. I the mean, first. Maybe it was an eye roll. Like, someone's got like when they hear it or like they it gets popped back to them. It's got to just be like a, like, gee. So, <sighs> like a, just a deep breath. Some like, people, you know, yeah. I don't know. Maybe I'm lacking self awareness here, but I just don't understand how it's so hard to just not be a complete D fucking bag. <laughs> like, just don't be an asshole. You you're living millions of people's dreams. You're getting paid millions of dollars to play a fucking game, and all you have to do is like be a good teammate. It's not a, hard, dude. I mean, obviously, it's really I mean, not hard to be a good teammate. It's really I mean, not like that right hard now. To make. We're thinking no. about it way after the fact, but I'm thinking he could even he could even said like both things. He could have been like like yeah, you know, there were plays we made behind me, but like I was also bad. Mm-hmm. You easy. know, they always they say the best the best ones always. Always, always wear the blame and give the credit, period. And so when shit goes sour, the ones that absorb it the most are the ones that you pay attention to most because those, those, are, the, those, those are the good ones. The ones that deflect and blame shift, those, those are the ones that we call them Eddie Haskells. They're dangerous. They're, they're, they're one way around like the adults, and then when they're in private, they're completely different. And those kind of guys you don't want. You want the guys that are willing to lead from the front, not the back, and the guys that are willing to wear it and then and give the credit instead of you know accepting the credit and 
you know, bucking the bucking the blame. Well, that's what you're looking for. Bucking the blame. By the you way, always have you always have solid like baseball terms for me, Kyle. Kind of. I really yeah, appreciate well, I that about about you. Also Bucking a blame, baby. Uh, right down. I find I sound like an old uh, nineteen thirties like gangster movie. He uh, threw, he he threw in that heater. Uh, he has, a has his hands. <laughs> yeah, it's whammy, whammy. Come on. Uh, so he gave him the old spitter and he gave him a nice little cock shot. So Zoe, yeah. you're <laughs> a water wagon there, old timer. When we were doing Sorry, the season I'm preview, right. what was the team that you weren't scared of at all? The Indians. Or was Oops. it the Royals? Well, that's the thing. Uh, the Indians don't exist anymore, so maybe you're right. But you have to be scared uh, of the Guardians. I'm still not nervous about the Guardians. Uh, I think it's. I mean, it's Jose. The, don't pitch the Jose Ramirez. Well, yeah. I mean, if you literally <laughs> walk Jose Ramirez four times, you can probably beat the the Guardians. But so the bases loaded. Walk where like where the Guardians are like scorching hot right now, and the White Sox bats have gone cold. I think both of those things will come to a mean. Yeah. very soon uh i love this Quan kid the story in cleveland the the rookie that just yeah. the kid has like if you play with them in mlb the show like they did a uh, moments with him and he's like a hundred something contact with like 20 power but he just hits yeah. singles and doubles in the gap he put one over andrew vaughn's head which vaughn looked terrible on uh today but he just hits dude he, he said a... he's seeing the ball like a beach ball right now I mean, that, that, that might have been true like the first four games because he had a reverse wisdom. Because I think yeah. he started the year like 10 for 13 and then he went like 1 for 12. Yeah, people started <laughs> calling him uh, Mercedes. Oh, no. No, I'm – this is – I guess this is my final point and then we're going to talk about the Cubs and stuff like that. The knee-jerk reactions at the beginning of the year are hilarious to me. Absolutely hilarious to me. Except for wisdom. Well, it's just <laughs> – I'm just kidding. <laughs> But it's just like when people like, you oh, know, and I'm, and I guess to be very clear here, I am very guilty of this too. But like, let's say Detroit comes out and wins three games in a row. And I'm just like, I told you about the over on Detroit wins. They're going to suck this year, guys. <laughs> it's fucking April, man. Like, and I, I did a, a little video about it and I'm, this is actually a good transition into the Cubs, but, uh, <laughs> why do Cubs fans like, and I'm not saying all, I hate generalizing entire fan bases, but why do certain Cub fans feel the need to compare Madrigal to Aloy? Zo, I listened to, or I watched your, your, uh, your little uh, video uh, yep. on it's, Tuesday. It's I heard similar. the, I, I saw the talk. I saw the tweet early in the day. You got trolled. I mean, that's just, that, I saw it. That, that was just a troll. Was it just a troll? It, that was just a troll. Then hand up, I'll own it because it worked, dude. I got, I got, got because. No, that's the thing. Because like, I was gonna say, like, guys, there is. I brought it up like yes. please, there is this section of Twitter that we just have no, we have no concept of, because it is almost like just pure troll. But like, these guys are smart. They're smart because like they obviously know what like what, you know, gets people riled up. And I'm not even saying like they like they don't know baseball thing because they, they clearly do when you go through some of these threads there's hilarious fight today talking about shane bieber and his fastball it was like a like a 30 tweet back and forth and at the end this dude just murdered this other guy on twitter it was hilarious but we're talking about like these like 18 to like 20 like 20 year old kids kids i'm sounding old as fuck now no, uh, hey, we're on my lawn uh, back in my day we would we would we would have tweet um yeah dsl wait oh, there's just like this entire section of like mlb twitter that like we just have no idea sometimes because like i'm telling you so if i would have saw that tweet too i would have been like wait a minute yeah i mean it was what is it, this? I, no, I think what got me cool. what got cool. me was the the replies like a lot yeah. of people took this bait yeah, that's the thing that's what they want like, like, you got you, like you said you got yeah I got got I got got because of the replies because if you compare those two players, that's like comparing my voice with Taylor Swift. Because, like it's like, it, what are you doing here? Like because the same day, this so so that troll was really Cubs fan. The same day, I think earlier in the day, it was a Sox fan who had a a blatant troll, but some people fell for it still. And it was like uh, it was talking about the same thing. It was like Nicky Magical has a whatever WRC Luis class. Robert. Luis Robert has yeah. uh, like <laughs> like did the White Sox make a mistake trading the oh, wrong that guy? Was e that was EMS, dude. Everything that dude does is a troll. I know that dude. Like but... that's the thing. There, it's just there's a lot more now though, and like it is hard because yeah. sometimes you're like, wait, 
Are they being? I guess I got to admit. Uh, and when Northwest Indiana Steve from uh, on Tap Sports, he oh. is very good. Like he'll see people's tweets and he knows he goes right for it. And he's he started this whole hashtag this year that they're all running with over there on, at on Tap uh, set the tone. But it was during spring training, like when someone would come out after like two innings, he'd be like, "What is Tony doing? You don't I, take I, your pitcher out. You step on the fucking I remember throat." That. I think Kevin, yeah. Kevin, you and me, we got got that one day. Yeah, because you know, he was talking about the starting pitcher. Yeah. He, was like, he was talking about like a starting pitcher against. Well, especially like, when uh, <laughs> when the good <laughs> reverend when the good reverend there reaches into that bag of gummies, he definitely is a little <laughs> bit more suspect to get uh to get yeah. got. Right, by the way, uh, official Cubs, D backs, or D rays, rays, double rays, whatever the hell they're called now, banged ball game. So Cubs officially yeah. lose. Save a that couple really innings. On, save a couple innings on arms. So that really they, sucks though, because they had Cubs plus four and a half. Ooh. God damn. Ooh. Um, but before we, before we go into the Cubs game, I do want to remind everyone to make sure you, if you're looking to play some golf this summer, check out our sponsor, Chicago Golf Tour, shygolftour.com. Uh, it's a great way to meet like minded individuals in the Chicago land area if you just want to get out and play some golf. Uh, as a father of a one year old, you know, with a nine to five, and then this and a bunch of other stuff going on, it's hard for me to like sync up tea times with people. So, the Chicago Golf Tour gives me a lot of flexibility to uh, meet other golfers uh, around my age with similar mindsets, people that just want to go out and play some good golf, play some new courses. So, shygolftour.com, use promo code SM25 to get $25 off your sign-up fee. It's actually not that bad of a sign-up fee. I thought it was going to be way more expensive than that. So uh, shygolftour.com, I think the first event actually went live starting last week or this week, but the conditions have been shitty. They know they live in Chicago. They know what's going on. They'll move stuff around. So uh, shygolftour.com, show them some love, everybody. They've been a great sponsor to us so far. We really appreciate that. So can we... Can we talk about how right we were about Seiya Suzuki? Is that gloating or? It's still too early. No knee-jerk reactions. It's I know right. it is, but we've been right so far. See, if you all you got to do is throw so far at the so end of sentences far. like that, so and your knee-jerk reaction you. sounds so way far. less douchey. All you got to say is so far. Like, Cleveland's been great so far. You, you can class like, it up. You can class it yeah. up. Be like, uh, I love this Cubs offense as of I now. I do. But <laughs> I got to say. So far. Before you guys kind of take over with the Cubs talk, but as an outsider looking in, because I have them on two fantasy teams, it is actually just as a fan of baseball, it is nice to watch Suzuki approach at the plate, man. So for a guy who's never played any baseball in the United States, I mean, I get baseball is a universal language. It's pretty, you know, but like it's wild over there in Japan. I and mean, they got all kinds of crazy pitches, like, all, and so for him to come over and for his plate approach to not only know the zone so well, he's, he has great plate discipline, but his swing is so effortless. Even like he'll hit a bloop over the second baseman's head and then he'll hit one and he'll put it on Waveland and it's the same swing. And it's like, holy shit, dude. Like he's something special so far. And I mean, right now, the proof is in the pudding. Player of the week, his slash line is 414, 581, 897. Um, yeah, man, I, I as again, as the, the resident Sox fan on this show, I'll give it up, dude. That dude's a player, man. It is what it is. You guys got to be loving it. Yeah, no, I, mean, I, I already talked about him last week. So Kevin, like, what do you got on saying? He's a professional hitter. He's he's not a rookie. I mean, he's a rookie only in name only, only because of the fact that he's a, a first year player in American, you know, Major League Baseball. But he's not by any means a mindset of a rookie. He's a very polished professional baseball player. Period. And that's the thing is, I think it's so shocking to everyone. We talked about it on the show that it might be, you know, there might be a little delay in him kind of getting a feel, you know, kind of feeling his way around, right? Like the, uh, uh, you know, like a, like what do they say? Like a midget at the urinal, he'll have to stand his toes and just keep going and learn and, and, and grow and, you know, make some mistakes and learn the strike zone. But what he's done is he's shown that he, nobody really knows what to do with him right now. So he's taking advantage of every mistake and he's not chasing stuff out of the zone. He says he's very disciplined. He plays well. Uh, his base running ability is something that oh, people didn't talk about enough. Breaking moves. Oh, uh, from a friend of ours, uh, Healy six, make sure you're following Healy six on Twitter and on Twitch. If you play MLB the show, the Cubs tonight acquired left-handed pitcher, Sean Newcomb from the Braves for right-handed pitcher, Jesse Chavez 
and a cash consideration. Ooh. I think, I mean, John Newcomb has been like terrible for like two or three years, but our guy, and I trust his stuff because he's been on the Dylan Cease trade before everybody else. Jordan Lazowski wanted him badly yeah. for the Sox. Jordan knows pitching, man. So that's going to be interesting. We'll dive into that. Yeah, a little John, bit. I mean, John Newcomb has been horrible, but that's a good, solid, cheap pickup. But I do want to touch on this point too. Again, thank you, Healy, for jumping in, but this is about Suzuki. His approach is so good that I feel like when teams learn his tendencies, they're going to pitch to him differently. But that's kind of the case with any rookie. Yeah. Well, but, he, but again, with him too, he, and he mentioned it, he's not a big, um, and we talked about it, I think, in our chat too. He's not big, he's not a reliant guy on too much uh, too much of the metrics or too many numbers either. He, he doesn't want to over overload himself with too much data. He wants to go up there and still react. And I think that that's something that he'll eventually have to do eventually as he gets down the line when teams start figuring him out a little bit and they start changing the approach and he starts they start finding what little flaws he might have in his swing and his approach right now. But there's always a flaw. There's always a crack somewhere. So he'll have to make adjustments. But I think that what he does is that is, and, and he's, he's going to make those adjustments though. I mean, he's, he's, he's a hitter. He's a professional. He, he really and is disciplined. This is a good point by Alex. So, and we talked about it a lot in 2020, Luis Robert, when yeah. basically he was on fire and then major league baseball figured out he, he can't lay off a slider low and away. But see, that's the thing. I think that won't be the case. And then Healy agrees with you. He said when he does, when they do pitch differently, he'll still do good. Yeah, because yeah. no, like he's already laying off those sliders. Like the, the yeah. biggest, the biggest question mark was, it, it was, I mean, it was the same. Everybody was saying the same thing. How is he going to handle velocity? The average fastball in Japan was like at ninety-one miles per hour. Uh, last year in Major League Baseball, it was like almost ninety-four. Uh, so far, I think he's hitting like like. 380 against fastballs 94 miles per hour or higher this year. That was the, that was the biggest question mark. How is he going to handle velocity? This is supposed to be his adjustment period. And yes, yes, I know. I'm getting way too excited. He's been awesome so far. Um, but like you said, Kevin, he he. we're not talking about even Luis Robert. What was Luis Robert in 2020? 22 years old? Mm -hmm. Like we're talking about, uh, like, yes, obviously playing in Japan isn't the same as MLB. We're talking about a guy who's been a professional baseball player for eight years. That's yeah, very good. Shock system. He knows how to live on the road. He knows how to take care of himself. He knows how to prepare himself for day games and night games. He's got, he got a routine, professional, that some of the younger guys, it takes them a while to figure out. Now, he, yeah, he's having to adjust to the American game, but I think the dude has also, you know, what you see a lot of, enthusiasm. He's kind of a fun guy. Like, he, he jumps around, and he's happy to see people, and, you know, he seems to be well-liked as far as just personality-wise. So he also brings to the table someone that is is – Keeps it from being a giant dark cloud in the in the clubhouse too often, and it can in a, in a clean way, in a good way, because he's someone that's a professional. He's not going to let it interrupt their ability to prepare themselves for for competition. This is going to sound a little mean because I love the guy when he was on the team. Just he was like the same type of personality. But say Suzuki is basically has the personality of uh, Muninori Kawasaki, except for he's just a really great hitter. <laughs> or just really great at baseball overall. <laughs> no offense to Kawasaki, but like these guys just like great around the clubhouse. I mean, he's he has an interpreter with him like all the time, but like he's still mm -hmm. being able to you know build up these relationships with his teammates, which is great. He and he Joy, looks like he, he looks like he's having fun, dude. That's my That's biggest thing. He looks Joy like he's having fun. All language barrier. When you see Joy, it breaks every language barrier. I mean, period. don't get me wrong. Hitting 414 in the show is going to make everybody have a good time. But <laughs> even before he took one step on a Wrigley Field, like he did the "I love you, Mike Trout." Like, I mean, he his, seems like he's just having fun, dude. His first spring training game, he sure got on three pitch. Like he looked like terrible that first at bat. He was like cracking jokes afterward. He was like, "Yeah, like I, I hope they're not going to be throwing a, a beer at me if I do that at Wrigley." <laughs> And see, that's cool, man. I love seeing that. And he has a great story. Take notes, Dallas. Fuck Dallas. <laughs> um, but I'm I'm really happy for him. I mean, it's a great. And I don't know if you guys have been seeing this, but the next uh, sensation or phenom or whatever that might be coming from overseas. There's this 17 year old kid just pump and shatter over in Japan, dude. Holy shit. He, I think, I think after his last start, he's retired 52 batters in a row. Fizz, it's unreal. Have you seen this kid? 
I think this guy, I, I, like, I don't know if he's, I forget, I forget his yeah. age. He's like 18 or, or 17. whatever. 17. He's 17. He's 17. This dude's doing a grown ass man. I mean, he's, I mean, he's definitely like going to have time to down eventually, but I mean, he's like throwing a hundred miles per hour every pitch. Speaking of which, uh, yeah, back to back, no hitters, dude. This kid's unreal, man. Speaking of Tommy John, and I don't want to put Do that on anybody, but have you guys seen Hunter Green too? Oh, I, I, told you guys, I told you guys. I told you. I remember together, sharing. Dude. I remember sharing his video during spring training. I'm like, this guy's gonna be a problem. He is just pumping fucking heat, dude. Holy shit, is he fun to watch? Like in terms of in terms of uh, in terms of at least his fastball velocity, he's like the new Degrom. Yeah. So like Degrom's gl- basically the guy who throws 100, and you have to just there's mm-hmm. a second tier. But the now thing it's Hunter is, Green. with Hunter Green, dude, his best pitch is his fucking slider right now. He's just getting nasty with it, dude. He's sick in MLB the show too, by the way. I was gonna say the, <laughs> the Reds. The Reds also have I think his last name's like Ashcraft or something, uh, something like that. Huh. He was pitching against the. He's down in AAA. He was pitching against the Iowa Cubs on Wednesday morning. That dude was throwing like 98, 99. So the Reds have some heat coming. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, they can't score for shit. They're gonna be terrible in two thousand twenty-two. And their owner's they the have, fucking worst. But yeah, yeah but they they have some. Uh, they have. Some you know what their owners should do to really stick it to their fans? You just trade, trade Jonathan India to the White Sox for Dallas Keigel. Oh, I was gonna say to the Cubs. No, we'll take India. <laughs> it will fit right in at that second base spot. We'll well, wasn't India drafted right after like Mandrigal? Sure. Hey, man, you can write it wrong. Exactly. It doesn't matter. Yeah, do it, Han. Fix your mistake. Go Go for it, dude. Uh, God, that'd be fuck. Oh, I would fucking lose it. That would be insane if he's just like fuck my fans. I'm trading for Dallas Keuchel. Here's Jonathan India. (laughs) You want? You want? Okay, it's a little serious Hawks trade talk. You want Mankata for Jonathan India? I'm gonna think on that one a little bit. Ooh, it's that's not it? that's it not is. an that's not an instant no for me. That is definitely oh, not an instant no for me. Uh, his, update on Yohan, by the way. I was just gonna say his injury update wasn't great. Ooh. Still, it's still the whole. He looks like he's fine, but if he sneezes or laughs or something, it was he's in, his, he's uh, in pain. It it's his, oblique. Uh, yeah, those suck. Yeah, I mean it's terrible. Alex gives you the hard nope to that deal. <laughs> I mean, no, uh, that's what I'm saying. I was. But can't Vaughn play third? Isn't Vaughn a third baseman? Mm, I mean, or no, he's more first base. Berger played third, but Berger's everybody. I mean, Berger's another great story, and I love it when he gets hits and has these great games. But his fielding is a lot to be desired still. By the way, talking about Jake Berger, that little clip we had about talking about Jake Berger versus Gavin Sheets, a lot of Jake Berger support. Yeah, a lot of Jake Berger support. I mean. There is, if Jake Berger can find moderate success in baseball, he's probably going to make more money on the rights to his yeah. Netflix movie. Like, you know what I mean? Like that—that's such an insane story, dude. Yeah. By the way, going back to the Cubs real quick, I did want to address. Uh, Please stay on the Cubs because let's see. They don't give me fucking high blood pressure right now. <laughs> so Alex did. Uh, Alex did bring up Marcus Stroman's game uh, Wednesday against the Royal or against the Rays. Uh, I mean, he ended up giving up seven earned runs in four and a third. He did strike out seven guys, walked two, had 12 whiffs. And the big thing uh, that I saw, at least from the stack. Can you make a sick catch, too? Like a behind the back? like Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, he just he just didn't have anything for his slider. His slider is just hanging over the plate, getting rocked. The splitter, I think, is where he got most of those whiffs. So he still had the splitter going, but just had nothing. Did, did not have a slider, and that's why, I mean, for a guy who's not a, who doesn't have an overpowering fastball, he needs all of his secondary pitches to work. And his, he was just hanging a slider, getting just ripped by the Rays, uh, up and down the Rays. Uh, not, and I, I mentioned it. I, I'm not even worried about his just how he's pitching because, hey, I mean, again, like we saw Dallas uh, guys have off days. Uh, you obviously want to limit them to not as many. Uh, but it, it is giving me some uh, you Darvish uh, what, vibes from 2018. Uh, just in terms of, and it's not even like, it's, again, it's not even how they're pitching. Um, it's more like you create this excitement and the hype. You know, Sherman's very active on Twitter. Obviously, he does have, he does have some detractors. Which, you know, fine, every player does, but for a reason. It seems more polarizing with Marcus Stroman. But he does have a pretty solid fan base. You know, a lot of guys are behind him, like fan, mm-hmm. fans from other teams that he's pitched with. Um, 
So you had this hype uh, around him. You know, he he was one of the top uh, pitching free agents the Cubs got. Uh, but so far, after his first outing uh, in Colorado, couldn't get out of like the fourth inning, I think, after cruising through three. Uh, and again, uh, on Wednesday against the Rays, just no con- no command uh, of his pitches, getting rocked. Uh, it's just it's just it's disheartening. Like because it's like again, yeah. it's a new guy. You want you want to get behind them, and it's like uh, get off to a better start. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's it, it, it's you know, but again, you got to expect it. I mean, it's it's not easy to adjust to. I don't know. I, maybe it's the Cubs. Maybe it's just the adjusting to being a Cub pitcher. But we've seen it enough with the adjustment period. It just it does take a little bit for these guys to get caught up. And again, short in spring. I hate to use that as an excuse over and over again, but. So many things about the routines that they normally use don't exist this year. So, mm-hmm. you know, you got to be patient. The, the Cub fans that already – the DFA monsters are already, are already out chomping at the bit. And that makes that's a, That seems – I mean, I'll take Marcus Stroman in the White Sox right now. <laughs> Fucking hell, I'll take him in a heartbeat. And yeah, for the record, it. for the yeah. record, I, I actually defend Yoan Mankata a lot on Twitter. Like, I am – I think Yoan Mankata is a great baseball player. I just – the the thought of getting Jonathan India is very intriguing to me, but Yoan Mankata is a top tier third baseman in major league baseball when he's healthy. So I just want to be very clear on that before Alex is already trying to come at me a little bit, but I'm just saying like, I've always been a fan of Yoan Mankata. Maybe, maybe, maybe we'll throw that one out on Twitter one of these days. See, I see. bet you, I bet you right now, if you tweeted that like right now, I guarantee you, I, I almost feel very, very confident that India would win that. Because, by the way, by the way, hand up. Also, Yohan Makata, it, like the way that he's being treated by some Sox fans seems it's is It's unbelievable. Ridiculous. It's yeah. it's it's atrocious. So I'm not even on the whole Yohan Makata. It's Mankata absolutely overrated it's atrocious. or bad or whatever. But is, I do think that was an interesting. And the matchup. fact that people had the fucking stones to tell me Lurie Garcia is good, and then the same oh, person God. tweets out that Yohan Makata sucks. Oh, how should I tweet it? Just, just Ooh. do a whole, just do talking about? Oh. I'm talking about Ken W.O. Motherfucker. <laughs> I don't give a shit. <laughs> Fuck. But the, he's not alone is what I'm saying. Uh, yeah. Just tweet out straight up. Although just, you know, I'm my cow for Johnny in India. Yes or no. Let's see. White Sox. Oh, so Kevin. At the is, wisdom, what do you it, think? Long term. Yeah. I think he's Long-term. what he is. I think he is what he is. He's a guy that has three really good games and then he disappears for six and then three really good, which is really not great for consistent winning baseball. But when he's really good, he's really good. And people tend to, you know, it's kind of like blackjack. You always remember your big wins in blackjack. You always forget the stupid losses that you probably shouldn't have won. Uh, or that you probably, And so it, it's, it's very similar. It's kind of that again, he, he's going to go, he's going to disappear again for a couple of days, like for a week. And, and that, that just sucks. It's frustrating because you can't keep a guy in the lineup that does that consistently because you got to ride the wave and that's too big a wave. If it was like one on one off, one on one off, that's fine, but it's, it's two on and then, or three on and then see you later for a week and then three on again. And everyone's like, Oh man, he was so good for those two games. You, you, you missed <laughs> I'm, on seven. I'm, I'm laughing Fids because his slash line just completely emphasizes what you just said about him. 250, 300, 556, 250 as a batting average is a guy that has a couple good games, a couple shitty games. And, <laughs> His, his slash line just backs up your point completely. And it's over time too. Like the what 65 games is still his batting average over that 60, the, you know, his most recent 65 games is like 230, 235. He's still a 235 hitter with those hot streaks because the, the lows are so low. The hots get him back to 230. Like, so it's, 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 I mean, that's how low the lows are that it, it takes a seven for 10 effort to get back to 230, 240. And that's what he had to use to get back there. So I like what David Ross is doing with him though. He's using him as like a, a so he's not starting him every day. He, you know, he does get beat with, you know, I think velocity's got him pretty good. So mm-hmm. hard throwing righties, but he he seems to be hitting lefties pretty well. And I I know I my my biggest concern was him like screwing the lineup over and kind of being a big old goose egg. But Rossi, I, I t- got to tip your cap. Rossi's found a way to kind of at least kickstart him for a second. He you know he sat him for the one game until like what was like the seventh inning, and he had him come on, and that's when he hit that double. And then once he kind of broke through, it was kind of like you know the first time you. Never mind. <laughs> uh, he's like, let's keep doing this. Ooh, 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 that's good. So, <laughs> but and then it's gonna go cold again. He's just gonna run out, and you know it's gonna. But that's just that's frustrating. You want consistency. That's why 
it's kind of like David Bodiatis. I know, yes, he did hit the rookie record for homers, but he also was on pace to set the major league record for most strikeouts in a single season. Right. Yes. So, but I guess the other guy that's been pretty good for the Cubs, Ian Happ's been all right. Very, yeah. Ian has been fantastic. He already mm-hmm. had a supercharged card on uh, the show. Yeah. I mean, you yeah. got to be doing something right to get the green. But he's hitting 333, 405, 394. Been solid. That's solid. Take that all day. His numbers go down a tad too because he is a switch hitter. So when he jumps to the right side against lefties, no. he's actually not. He's been doing pretty well this year, though. He, this he year, had, yeah. He's been, you know, because he, he, he was horrible. he was horrible. He was horrible against left-handed pitching in 2021. His OPS was like in the 600s, like awful. You're talking about Larry Garcia territory. Um, so you know how bad that is. Uh, but no, this year I think he's he has like five hit five. At least five hits against left-handed pitching. I mean, you know, he's he has a much better swing. He's going to right field a lot more against mm-hmm. lefties. Always, always love to see that. You know, um, no. I, again, I think I mentioned it after like the first week of uh, games. I'll still, <laughs> I'll still stand on the Ian Happ is solid to good hill there. I think that's fair. I think that's perfect. A perfect place to put him. Aldo has officially tweeted it out. So let's let the chaos ensue. We, yeah, we need to we need to track this baby. See how well, this. Goes. See the the good news is. Um, we talked about how trolling is the backbone of MLB Twitter. I think we just nailed it right yeah. there. Backbone because of all jellyfish. Because that's so that's like <laughs> close enough where people are gonna get all fired up about eight it. Eight votes, eight votes in, fifty fifty. Yep. <laughs> I'm waiting oh, for somebody to, to, to end up getting banned from Twitter from arguing in this. A couple one. other uh, Cubs players though that I want to ask you guys about. What happened to your boy Clint Frazier, although? Oof. So what did I tell you? I said, I hope this isn't a Jock Peterson 2.0, and it's starting to look like Jock <laughs> Peterson 2.0. He yeah. was fantastic in spring training, just hitting the ball on the button every, almost every single time. He has the flashy shoes. Fans love him. He has a lot of fans, a lot of support coming out. And what, he has like two hits or something? Uh, See, that's the thing. Clint <sighs> Frazier is currently batting three for 21. Yeah, I mean, so yeah, like <laughs> – like what 140? Uh, that that, that is even matter because like the frustrating thing is like, I and it's be, and it's all because Jason Hayward is still on the team. Is like these guys aren't getting consistent at bats. Like Clint, yeah. Clint, Clint Frazier and even Michael Hermosillo, who still doesn't have a hit. But yeah. Like these guys are like in the lineup like twice a week, and like they'll come into a game and get like two at bats in the middle of the game, like facing two different pitchers out of the bullpen. And it's like yeah, they're never gonna get into a rhythm like that. And it's because you're giving your veteran guy playing time just because. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, you know, I mean, Clint, but regardless of that, though, Clint Frazier now, he still hasn't, he's he's getting, and again, maybe it's just a timing thing. He's not getting the regular at-bats, but he's having trouble with fastballs right now. He's swinging through them a lot. Um, Michael Marcio still doesn't have a hit. But at least he's taking some walks. Good. At least contributing something. And he plays solid deep in the center. Um, but, you know, that's just a frustrating thing that comes down to the playing time. And, again, like for these guys, if they struggle, fine. But I, at least I want to see them out there. And that's the thing with Wisdom, too. But, like, it's it's a little different with Wisdom because Wisdom is, like, 30 going on 31. So it's not we're not talking about a guy who's, like, you know, 26, 27 years old. Like, hey, give him a real shot. Again, I, I'm, I'm with Kevin. And again, if, if he does great, like, fantastic. Do I think it's going to keep up? No, it's going to be – back and forth, back and forth. And, you know, he'll even out to like an average hitter who strikes out a lot and who will hit some home runs. <laughs> so, so Lurie, Lurie has, uh, what was it? A negative, what? 75, 72, some WRC plus. The fact okay. that it's just negative. It's just <laughs> fucking trash. We really, Hermosillo you know, has gone hitless this season. 0 for 17. And he still has a 28 WRC plus. He walks. He's walking. So a hitless guy has a higher, uh, yeah. walks. I think he has like five walks. Yeah. By um, the way, we're we're about we're on the uh, stage of maybe about to get ratioed. We got one here. What the heck? What the heck is this man? Laugh, laugh my ooh, fucking ooh, ass off. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> is it worth By the way, thirty-four votes in. Yes, thirty-five percent. No, sixty-four <laughs> percent. Um, look at. I came to prepare with some Cubs questions for you guys tonight. Now, Keep the going. other one is uh, Jonathan Villar. He's hitting 400 right now in a small sample size. He's had 25, 25 plate appearances. Where do you guys want to see him play in the field more? Just uh, when when Wisdom isn't playing, just have him at third base. Okay. And then 
just go off that because again with Madrigal and Horner, I want those guys playing every day. Yeah. So mm-hmm. just just and platoon, way, platoon, split time, whatever with Villar and Wisdom, or you know, if you're going to DH one of those guys a couple days a, a week, do that. But yeah, I think we, I think Nico Horner, by the way, has proven he has the arm for shortstop. And has the jobs we sure. we we shouted that out for you last week while you weren't here. It's we uh Just, that play he made deep in the hole. I was like, and if Fitz was here, he would say, "Oh, I thought people told me he didn't have the arm to play shortstop." Well, I would have said the same way too. Like with that I know you would have absolutely. I, I, I <laughs> buddy, we've been doing this show for years now. I, I pretty much know what's coming. Um, Wait, Magical had a nice nice trash can. With... Magical had a nice sort of the plate too. Yep. For a guy yeah, he did. The, it's, he time. still has the – I don't know what it is when he's at second base and he has to throw the – like some of his throws sometimes. I don't know. Yeah, he, he needs to square up. Like he did that with the White Sox too. He squares up weird, dude. Like, like, like there hasn't been anything horrendous so far this season mm-hmm. on the field. No. But there are there have been just a couple of throws where it's like, uh, are what you was concerned? That? <laughs> are you concerned that he's already struck struck out three times this year? Uh, I am. I was told he never strikes out. Okay. Yep. <laughs> yeah, it's a seven percent strikeout rate. It's fine. <laughs> no, Nick, no. Nikki Barrels. Uh, like, see oh, that Nikki. I I wanted to bring that up after the first week, and again we were talking about early san- or, or early overreactions. But when I heard that in spring training, I was like, you can't do that when you 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 don't barrel the ball up, Nikki. You don't 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 give yourself that nickname. Stick with Nikki T strikes. It's fine. No one's gonna make fun of you with that. You don't like barrel up the ball, dude. Nikki Big Fly. It's that's he's Nikki Big Fly to me. I, I mean, right. Forever. Like just Nikki hit the ball because that's I mean he does he hits the ball it's not always great but he hits the ball. Well, here, he strikes out seven percent of the time Patrick Wisdom is just a tick under forty percent of the time I, that's the thing who's been more productive Patrick Wisdom yeah yeah well, <laughs> right. actually hold on hold on uh... actually no because Nick Madrigal did go on like a little hit streak here. I'm no, guys, no, I, guys. I'm a bad troller because I I feel the need to reply to these quote tweets. Oh, here we go. Why are, oh, from no. the Mankata Armada. We'll get down why are we the... trading the player that fixes the issues that this White Sox offense actually has, or has oh, by no. actually walking and having a long productive at bat? He's not wrong. Tune into the show. We did talk about the White Sox. Well, that's what I re- right? I replied to. I was like, sorry, this one's on me. If you watch the show, you'll get the context. Um, <laughs> Was this a mistake? So um, I feel bad for bringing. I this. feel bad now. I feel I like I think that's bad trolling. We can't. Uh, we can't delete though. We have to just. No, no, gotta write it storm now. Gotta yeah. write it out. Gotta write. Out. Alex tried to warn us too. That's fine. Yeah. Oh, just mute the conversation. That's the key to being good at trolling. Okay. See, I'm learning tonight. I'm learning. I'm, I'm learning tonight. I am learning. Uh, what else is going on? Yes. Shit, I didn't realize we're already at an hour ten. Uh, I already said Hunter Green. There's. Couple other things in baseball. Uh, Did Otani pitch a perfect game? No, no you hit. But uh, how about Oakland Athletics having like two thousand people, dude? <laughs> two, like I'm not even two thousand some people. Mm-hmm. I mean, I get what A's fans are doing. Like, fuck their owner, fuck the other organization. They're they're threatening to leave. They're trading all their good players. So don't give them your money. But like, my heart like bleeds for them as just a baseball fan because like I couldn't imagine like. I don't know, man. It just that just seems like a right because sh- like shitty, shitty like situation. think of like when you think of like like the seventy seventies like A's and it's like it's gonna come down to yeah like we're just gonna move and all that tradition you guys had is yeah. not gonna mean anything. <laughs> and as Fitz pointed out in our little uh, chat that we have, like the Raiders went significantly up in value as an organization when they moved to Vegas, and I think the A's will too. It's just. The Oakland A's, man. The Oakland A's to me is just always so cool. Like they got those Kelly Green and Gold uniforms. They always like Raleigh Fingers, Ricky Henderson. Like the A's were cool, man. And to see them completely gut that team this offseason, I they got some great fans, dude. When the White Sox played them in the first round of the playoffs two years ago, I tweeted out like I need some good Oakland fans to follow and like give shit back and forth to. And a couple I've like a good five to 10 of them I follow and I still follow this day and we have conversations about baseball all the time and they're good people, dude. They got a great knowledgeable fan base and it just sucks to see them being treated this dirty, dude. I think it would be cool though for me to be able to go down the street if they play where I think they might be playing and, and then go see the uh, Sox and see the Cubs play the athletics. Well, besides Kevin being a selfish <laughs> asshole. <absolutely. laughs> right, let's go. 
Sorry. I want some I want some Major League Baseball in Vegas in a nice 30,000 seat domed facility. 30? That baby better be like at least 40 plus. Nope. 30,000. Right really? Only, only 30? Rule of Vegas. Always keep a line. Okay. Just like there's only 18,000 for T-Mobile. Well, by the way, Zoe, Zoe and Kevin, uh, we're going to wake up in the morning. I mean, the, the tweet's going to have engagement, so there's going to be that, baby. <laughs> oh, yeah. We just got quote tweeted by my guy, Ben, with a video. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Tell, no, it, we're, telling everybody uh, to boo us. <laughs> this is <laughs> fun. This boo is, this man. <laughs> this is actually really funny, dude. I get why people like to do this now, because this is for Fake accounts suck. I'll never think that's fun. <laughs> No, 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 don't play the oh, audio. Oh, oh, I didn't know that's what yeah, oh, don't oh. play the audio, dude. That's oh, Tyler, the creator, dude. Um, uh, but yeah, dude. We got another reply. It might be the worst thing I've ever read. That's uh, this is fucking hilarious. <laughs> Someone said throwing throwing K- Miley and Castillo. <laughs> and then it, it's a maybe at best. <laughs> There's or not that maybe. much hate there. Oh, I don't know if I like baseball trolling. This is funny, but it, it also sucks because I don't want people to think that I actually want to do this. That's the thing. We did it behind. It's not us. It's the show. It's the show. Behind the shield. Behind the shield. The curtain. Hide behind the shield. Who knows? Who knows? To the man behind the curtain. Yeah, we'll just make up some fake name and be like, no, yeah, no, no. We got Joe, this was, this Joe Smith was in the comments saying. Uh, no, this was Southside South Oz. It's yeah. the other guy. Southside yeah, Oz. Yeah. Yeah. South Oz. <laughs> the man in the mirror. It's reversed. <laughs> oh, you just got home from the Cubs game, dude. Hopefully, you got some I'm dry so clothes, sorry. bro. Oof. Oh, yeah. But hold on. Uh, hold on. I want to look at some real quick. Cold, rainy. Oh, by the way, so the, I, I tweeted out how I, you know, the the Cubs are on pace to like break the double play record. It was ridiculous, but like it's fine because they. I mean, it's not fine, but mm-hmm. that means that, that they're getting a lot of uh, base runners on, so that's great. I think they're number one or number two now uh, on base percentage in baseball, which is fantastic. Uh, they have a like sub twenty, or I think after Tuesday's game, the strikeout rate went a little bit up, but I think it's only like at twenty percent. Again, I think that's top ten in the league uh, or close to it. So you know, it's a brand new group, a completely different approach. I love it, but the Cubs offense as a whole does suffer from ED. Uh, they just can't get it up. Too many ground balls. Uh, I think their ground ball percentage is above fifty percent, which is atrocious. Um, again, early on in the season, like even through April, when the when the weather is bad in Chicago, and even when they go out to other cities uh, in the Midwest, uh, you know you, you'll take the the ground balls. Obviously, you would want more line drives, but you know, and plus with the ball being whatever this year, uh, you can't be as reliant uh, on home runs early on. But that is certainly a thing to keep on or keep uh, keep track of during the year because. <laughs> A fifty percent ground ball rate is uh, oh. is going to get annoying really, really fast. One thing before we kind of when do you guys move Suzuki up in the lineup? He's hitting so two he's, now. He's hitting two now. Oh, they did. I they mean, they finally yeah, pulled the trigger on that. Okay. And I think David Ross says that's basically where he's going to be hitting. Where he should be hitting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I think I still like him at three, but two's fine. I like two. I I'm like good two with him at two. I'm actually really good with him at he's, two. He's he's an instant offense. He'll get he'll get a gapper here and there. He might obviously walk into one, and leave the yard, but setting up a guy and running runners in scoring position with your three four coming. Up, he's gonna he's gonna set up a nice and then, little table. I guess the other question I did have, like regarding the lineups, like what do you do? So now that you have say at two, so what do you do with guys like Horner and Madrigal, Kevin? Where do you bat for that? One's lead off and one's yeah nine. yeah. I just got to do. It. I I actually probably pr- would prefer. I almost like Nat Magical in the nine in a weird way and, and Horner in the one because Horner can actually ump a, a, a gapper and, and has a little more, a little bit more pop as far as like. That's another guy, Nico yeah. Horner, first at bat, hit a home run since the, I think he had a couple doubles in uh, in Colorado, but overall he's been. Triple. He had a triple, triple, in the triple against the Rays. Yeah. But uh, those, those hits have been few and far between. Really yeah, he needs to get heated. But that's the other thing. He's like he's hitting. Ni- he should not be hitting ninth. Have him one. I yep. do like him one because he does make a lot of contact. And like even if he does hit lazy ground ball, it's not like he's going to be hitting into a double play at least start the game. And for the most part, a leadoff hitter isn't going to be on uh, all the time with guys on base. Um, I, I actually agree with Ryan too. I think Willie should be hitting four. That three hole, he's rolling over way, way too often. Uh, I also think that's a little fluky thing. I think he already has 
four double plays. He had four all of like one year. But no, he is. He's never been this unprotected though in yeah. the lineup. Sure. So But then who do you who do you hit? Third I, I don't mind I don't mind I don't mind I mean Frank hit into a double play today too, I think, didn't he? Um he I think his ground ball rate is like at sixty <laughs> percent. I don't mind Ian. That's Happen. fluky, though. That's fluky, though. Mm-hmm. If it's against a righty, Ian Happen, that spot's fine. Yeah. Oh, I, but I mean, it's a again, just overall as a team, it's going to be a problem. Mm-hmm. You hope it doesn't last that long, but a lot of ground balls. Yeah. Yep. So, uh, everybody, make sure you tune in next week. We're uh, scheduled. You know. Things come up and shit changes, but scheduled right now. Uh, GM of the Birmingham Barons, Stephen Nelson, will be joining us next week to talk about down on the farm. Um, but yeah, that's uh, that's about it for this week. Appreciate it, everybody. Go watch the end of the Bulls Bucks game too on Wednesday night. Smash uh, the like button. Smash the like button. Fids oh, yeah, go subscribe, eat some, like button, Fids share. go eat some onions or something, dude. Um, By the oh, way, Fids, one last update. One last what? update. Uh, stop making these dumbass trades, man. Yoan isn't getting traded. Left my ass. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, this is... It, we might want to compile getting, those for next yeah, week. This is actually getting the reaction. And, and just to your point, Alex brought it up. Jose Abreu has been hitting third versus fourth debate in White Sox Twitter. It has been something for years now, dude, because of the, the ground and the double plays. I think he finished second or third in the league last year. Like... But then when you want to move him, he'll go out and hit like a game winning home run and he's Pito and he's amazing. And yeah. yeah I so. mean, hey, if he's gonna be hitting 30 plus home runs, right. Uh, sure. But yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, make sure you guys turn in next week. Make sure you uh show some sponsor love to ChicagoGolfTour.com, Shy Golf Tour. Um, and if you guys we're gonna be tweeting out the who needs the pinwheels bump, make sure you keep an eye on that this week. And uh DMs are always open. Hope everybody's being safe. Enjoy that nice weather this week, and uh, we'll see you guys next week.